So now that you've learned the four signs to help you identify if someone is quietly quitting, we also want to know and dig into the root cause. Why would someone quietly quit on you? Understanding the root cause is going to help us address our quiet quitters and hopefully prevent quiet quitting from occurring in your organization. So in this video, we're going to go over five different reasons why people may quietly quit. Now, I have a client who I am doing some consulting work for and another of the directors on the team came to the staff meeting one week and she said, I just hung up or left the meeting with my team and I had several people tell me that they're just overworked, that they feel like they're not being able to keep up, that the work just keeps piling on, they're being asked to do more with less, and they felt they had no work-life balance, and they were just concerned and felt that if something wasn't done, they were just going to come to work, do their job, and clock out and just do enough to get by. Now, this particular director, in my opinion, was lucky because her people came to her and let her know, hey, if something doesn't change, I am going to quietly quit on you. And I don't know how quiet it's going to be because I'm giving you a heads up that I cannot give another further. All right. You're going to have to do something about it in order for me not to choose the route of quietly quitting. So let's talk about why people quietly quit. So the very first one, and these are not in any particular order, is going to be be poor communication. Now, when I say poor communication, what I mean by that is someone on the team who is about to quietly quit may feel that upper management is not providing clear goals and guidelines and expectations for the work that's supposed to be performed. So oftentimes, as managers, we give all kinds of assignments. We throw things out at our employees. And most of the time, or some of the times, we do not set the expectations or when are these things due? What is a priority? What needs to happen first? Those are the type of things that help to provide better communication to your staff so that they don't feel like they're being poorly communicated to. Another thing that occurs is when you don't have proper communication, people feel like they're out of the loop, okay? So they feel like things are going on that they're not aware of, decisions are being made without their input uh, being involved. I hear this all the time, especially when I used to work as an employee. People would say, upper management's making all these decisions and they don't realize the people down here that's actually having to do the work can't take on anymore or that doesn't make sense to do it that way. Who came up with this idea? So they feel out of the loop and they feel they're being told what to do and not being clearly communicated on why or is there any input on to how this could actually be done better. When people are poorly communicated to, they then begin to lose interest because what happens is they say, well, if you're not going to communicate well with me, I'm just going to do the bare minimum. I'm going to do what you told me to do. I'm going to clock out when I go home. And when that occurs, guess what you have? You have a quiet quitter. So now Number two is sometimes people feel like they don't belong. And whenever people feel like they don't belong at your organization, it's going to be very easy for those folks to check out. And by feeling like they don't belong, they may not be sold on what your organization's values are, or maybe they were in the past, but they're not any longer. And so what happens is those folks then, because they don't feel sold and bought into your organization or feel that they belong in that organization, or feel that they're doing it and making a difference, they'll again just check the boxes, doing the bare minimum, which we know is a sign of someone who is a quiet quitter. In our remote work environments that we have now, this is very common because you have no bonding that's going on. There's no water cooler conversations. There's no lunchroom conversations. There's no break room conversations because everybody is remote working. And so as a manager, you have to find a way to be able to engage your team so that they actually do feel that they are belong. So we have poor communication. They feel like they don't belong. The third one is not necessarily a quiet quitter. It is a reason people quietly quit, but it's a reason for a lot of things. If people feel that they're not recognized. So we have lack of recognition for not even just good work, but work. OK, so remember, you're piling a lot of things on these folks. Um, they may have a lot of work to do, uh, even if it's not a lot of work in your eyes. It's still the bare minimum productivity that you're having to have them crank out. Well, they may feel like at least you can say I'm doing a good job with it. Acknowledge that I am meeting the goals that have been put into place. So they just don't have any recognition. I think oftentimes as managers, we think that we can only recognize when somebody goes above and beyond. But you just need to start recognizing people 
people for doing the job that you asked them to do. Along with that same lines is people feel that there's no room for advancement. And so when people feel that they are stuck in a particular role and they don't have anywhere to go, so there's no career development and opportunities for them, then they're going to possibly quietly quit on you because they've become bored. Uh, so maybe the job that you're doing or they're, that they've actually been assigned to do is no longer engaging to them. And so therefore, they don't feel like there's any room for advancement for them. There's no professional development going on at your organization and so then that causes them just to continue to check the boxes and even if you're only recognizing people who are doing extraordinary or superior how much greater can you do a job that you're already so great at and you've been doing for such a long time therefore you have lack of recognition and you have lack of career development and advancement in your organization and that could lead to someone quietly quitting on you. All right, so let's move on to number four and this is the fourth reason why somebody may quietly quit on you and it's inconsistency. And when I say inconsistency, by that I mean maybe when you're translating things to your team, it's very frustrating to them. So they're getting p information piecemeal to them. They're not getting the full picture. Um, they're getting th spoon fed. And some of the times maybe it doesn't make sense to the team as to why certain decisions are made. Um, I know as an employee, I've heard this before, is like who's making these decisions in upper management because down here on the working floor, that's not how it's done and it's just not working. Another opportunity for you to look into inconsistency is around technology. So we're going through that right now at our organization. And it's basically because we have our own homegrown tool, uh, but we have grown substantially. And sometimes the system lags. There are certain clicks that have to be made that just don't work well with efficiency. And so that can be very frustrating to the team and the end user because it looks like the technology does not work. Now, I will tell you, you have to have the right people, the right technology, you have to have the right people, the right technology, and the right process. And sometimes the right, not having the right technology and not having the right process, especially flow of information down to your right people, will turn, will turn your right people into quiet quitters. And the fifth one is going to be one that gets me as an employee for sure. The work is just downright boring. I hate doing a mundane task. Uh, my father worked at a plant for all of his life and he retired from there and he drove forklift. Now, he never complained about the job being boring, but I have to think that it had to be boring. Now, some people can do mundane boring and not have any problem with it. I'm just not one of those people. I like to have a challenge. I like to work through the challenge, get it fixed, and then I move on to something new. So what you need to look for in your organization is, is there an opportunity for you to find out if they're mundane work. Maybe the work really is boring. Now, from my team standpoint, I'm going to say that the work can be the same. And so what the business we're in is calling on rejected pharmacy claims and making sure people are adherent to certain medications. And so the medication list is usually the same. The rejected claims codes are usually the same. The only thing that's really different is who you're talking to and how you're actually going to resolve them. Because you never know what problem that you're going to get, but you do know that there's a problem. You know that you've got to find the solution and you've got to make sure that that solution gets executed. And so that in and of itself may be mundane to someone, uh, but it may not be mundane to someone else. So what you're going to need to do is find those vulnerable points in your organization where the work just could be boring because that could be why somebody's quietly quitting. They're no longer challenged uh, by what they're actually doing within your organization on a day-to-day -day basis. Now you know the four key signs to recognize if someone is quietly quitting on you. And then you also know at least five root causes as to why they may have chosen to quietly quit. So what do we do about it? How do we address it? And better yet, how do we prevent it? I encourage you to watch the next video as we go over three ways that you can actually help prevent or address quietly quitting in your organization.